Hello and welcome to the Friday, June 30th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Remco's rat is malware that Brad found this week in an email attachment. Actually, well, the email attachment led him to the malware. It started out as so often with an email to that included a link to a PDF. The interesting part here is that the link went to acrobat.adobe.com. This is a legitimate adobe.com URL, but it's used for Acrobat users to publish documents. So it's user provided content that's not provided or in any way vetted by Adobe, which of course can then be easily used uh, to do what the attacker did here, publish a PDF document with a link that then leads the victim to a zip file. And then the usual Circus starts where you have the zip file being downloaded, a password is being used to decrypt it. So that way it's more difficult to inspect the payload as part of any kind of proxy or so that you have, which will then eventually lead to the malware. Also, all the communication happens to be, if I saw this right, over HTTPS. So you do need to do TLS inspection to see anything here. As usual, Brad is providing packet captures and uh, malware samples or links uh, to that in order for you to be able to follow along with Brad's analysis. And if you're a user of ArcSurf, a backup product, you may have seen a patch being released earlier this week, fixing a single vulnerability. It's an authentication bypass CVE 2023-26258. Eight. Researchers from MDSEC originally discovered this vulnerability and notified ArcSurf of this vulnerability. It's actually very trivial to exploit and these researchers also have now published a blog post with a proof of concept for uh, this exploit. The problem is that the authentication is done via essentially a proxy and the user as part of the request uh, to this authentication API endpoint does control the server to which this request is being forwarded to. So basically the name of the authentication server. And as a result, a user may just specify essentially their own authentication server that will of course always provide a positive result to ArcSurf and lock the user in. This vulnerability affects version 7 through 9 of ArcSurf UDP. And by the way, it's a standard HTTP request. UDP here stands for Universal Data Protection, not for the network protocol. And we got a new version of Sysmon with a number of interesting uh, features. Sysmon, of course, great Windows tool in order uh, to keep a tap on what's going on on Windows endpoints. Sysmon 15, which was now released, has sort of two features highlighted. One is that it is now able to detect and send an alert if an executable file is created. So if malware writes a file, creates a file on disk and makes it executable, this will trigger an alert. Uh, of course, most users don't really have to create executable files. This can also be combined uh, with the mark of the web information to, for example, figure out if uh, this particular file was downloaded from the internet and where it was downloaded loaded from. In addition, Sysmon is now a protected process, more correctly, a protected process light. What this means is that just like uh, many anti-malware uh, programs, Sysmon is now protected from being tampered with once it starts running. This, of course, is important if you are running a Sysmon in a potential hostile environment, which, of course, is what you often use Sysmon for. And when you hear about electromagnetic wave attacks against drones, usually you think about attacks that affect the connection between the controller and the drone. This usually fairly long distance wireless 
connection is often susceptible to injection attacks or at least denial of service attacks. Well, IOActive now came up with another way to attack drones wirelessly, even though I'm not sure how practical this attack is in real life. The problem here is that, well, uh, the PCP, the board, the circuit board of the drone itself is susceptible to electromagnetic interference. And in particular, if it's exposed to very specific electromagnetic interference during the firmware update process, an attacker may be able to alter the firmware. This is interesting because this usually happens after the signature was validated. So at this point, an attacker may inject code into the firmware without being detected. Interesting exploit, they got it to work in the lab, like I said, to be able to get a strong enough signal to the drone just at the right moment when a firmware update is happening. I am not sure sort of how realistic uh, this is sort of in real life. It's difficult to protect against this type of attack. Additional shielding, of course, may help, but this will also add weight to the drone, which usually turns out to be a problem. They did use DJI drones for their experiment, but of course, it's very likely that other manufacturers' drones are susceptible to this as well. Well, and this is it for today. Like I mentioned yesterday, this will be the last podcast for a while due to the 4th of July holiday, as well as some traveling I'll be doing. The next podcast will be published on Thursday. So thanks for listening, everybody, and talk to you again on Thursday. Bye.